Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The South African Bureau of Standards has confirmed that no local content audits have been carried out on the locomotives being procured by Transnet under its so-called 1064 program. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss the possible implications. Welcome Terence. Hi ah, Sam. Terence, what is the background to this contract and what is the SOBS's role? Well, the contract was concluded in 2015 and it arose out of Transnet's market demand strategy. It's a, a hundred multi-billion rand a year uh, over multi-years program to really build South Africa's freight logistics network ahead of demand. And part of that was a, a plan to really scale up and modernize uh, Transnet's, both its diesel and its electric locomotive fleet. And incrementally, it had been buying over the years for the coal line, for the um, iron ore line. But this was really dedicated to the general freight business. And uh, this was about uh, a really a modernization of that rolling stock fleet. And uh, the, uh, over many years, it was deliberated upon. And uh, eventually, the contract was placed with four contractors, uh, four OEMs to supply. Um, 1,064 locomotives with uh, General Electric and uh, China, North, uh, China North Rail to supply the diesel locomotives, about 100, 233 and 232 diesel, uh, uh, diesel locomotives apiece, and the electric locomotives, the bulk of which went to um, uh, uh, China South Rail, and the, uh, 240 of those went to Bombardier Transportation. So th it's, it's a, r a really large contract. And as part of that, as it was one of the first, you know, if it followed the designation by the Department of Trade and Industry of certain sectors and certain products that should be procured locally. So the DTI uh, designated ra uh, railways rolling stock as one of that and set thresholds for um, electric and diesel motive, um, uh, locomotives as to how much should be uh, procured locally or made locally. And for electric, it's a high threshold of around 65%, and for diesel, 55%. So they, they're fairly important and high thresholds with the idea of building a local uh, rail engineering industry around this procurement, because it is such a large one, 50 billion rand, and a multi-year. So it was going to be an important stimulus for the local engineering industry around the railways. And then also at the same time, the African Union has made South Africa sort of the center of railways rolling stock as part of the North-South Corridor and other plans that we have for railways in, in Africa. And to when once that designation is done, the Treasury then aligns that with uh, procurement notes. Uh, so they issue an, uh, instruction notes to the procurers of these different products under the designation. So you have solar water heaters and all sorts of things that have been, power pylons. There have been a number of these that have been um, designated for local procurement. And those instruction notes were issued for diesel and electric. Um, and SABS's role was then to verify whether that local, th uh, local content was actually in embedded in these different locomotives or whatever the is being procured, whether, as I said, uh, solar geysers, etc. And uh, that is their role, that is their mandate. They, they mandated by the Department of Trade and Industry to do that verification and those audits. And uh, that, that they've really had that mandate since about 2011 when the, the new standard was issued as a new local content standard was issued and then when obviously the um, the locomotive contract was issued and or awarded in 2015 the idea would be that SABS would be the agent that independently verified whether the local content commitments made by the different OEMs China South Rail, China North Rail, GE and Bombardier were met. So these audits um, have not taken place why is this so and uh, what is the prospect that the th thresholds will actually be met? Well, the, uh, this is quite startling, actually, because we're quite deep now into the, it's 2017, we're deep into the, the actually, execution of these projects. Uh, we know that already Transnet has taken delivery of a number of locomotives from, uh, hundreds of these locomotives from General Electric and from China South Rail, and they've taken delivery, I think, of about four to each from China North Rail and Bombardier. So we qu the execution is underway. And the fact that these audits are not being done uh, is, 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 is concerning because we need to know independently and uh, independent verification as to whether the local content that was promised is being delivered 
and if it's not being delivered, then penalties have to be uh, issued. Transnet, realizing there's a problem, and th it seems the main problem, if I go back a step, is that this is not a funded mandate. So there had to be some way of recovering the cost of these, these audits. Now, either it has to come through us as the taxpayer or uh, to fund this through the DTR, or it has to be a cost recovery with the, either with Transnet or with the original equipment manufacturers. Now, SABS says there's been plenty of engagements with both Transnet and the OEMs, but that there was no, no real progress has been made in finalising how this would be funded. So this is a, a major stumbling block, and the DTR acknowledges as well that this is a major problem, that the funding for this verification and this audit process has not been forthcoming. And there's no sign, actually, that this is going to be resolved anytime soon in terms of the funding. So in the meantime, Transnet claims that they independently have uh, contracted with Price or PwC and that they've asked PwC to, to do this monitoring of whether the local content commitments are being met. But this is not independent. This is not how it was envisaged to be done. This is basically Transnet putting a sort of a band-aid on the problem. And given the trust environment or the lack of trust environment, especially around state-owned companies, and given the many questions that are being raised around uh, the procurement of these locomotives, there's a particular charge has been laid by the economic freedom fighters against Transnet uh, and even the current finance minister, who was the public enterprises minister at the time, around the, the, the award to China South Rail. And uh, we know that that has triggered, within uh, Transnet itself, has triggered a, a, an independent board level review that's being led by Worksman's at the moment, which should be completed around September or October, we hear, and that will give us uh, some idea. But there's a lot of anxiety about whether that contract, the value was uh, inflated. There's particular anxiety around whether the China South Rail used the middle uh, person or middle man in this case in the form of a company owned by Sadim Essa, who has strong links or ties with the Gupta family. And this, just this week exited the Trillion Group, where he also had strong associations. And that Trillion Group a company that's emerged had got contracts in a strange, in quite a strange or unorthodox way at both Eskim and Transnet over the years. So there is this, this trust deficit. So therefore, SABS is independent audit and verification of whether these commitments that were made in 2015 are being met is, is very important. And there are now serious questions over that too. What are the industrial policy implications? Well, ultimately, industrial policy uh, comes down to can you monitor and verify? Uh, so you make certain, you put certain lines in the sand. Um, uh, for instance, here, 65 percent of an electric locomotive, 55 percent of a diesel load must be procured from local suppliers. Um, you know, you put that policy in place. Now it's about policing and implementation. And if you're not policing um, that industrial policy, the outcomes um, that you envisage might not uh, materialise. So it has serious implications for the way we run industrial policy. Should the, the player, which is Transnet in this case, be the referee through a PwC uh, or, uh, in house audit, doesn't look ideal, particularly as I mentioned in the, the, in the environment of a lack of trust. So I think it has serious industrial policy. We, we, the, 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 the expectation around the railways was that South Africa was going to revive its railways engineering community around both the PRASA and the Transnet contracts. Now, the key here is the local content. If that's not going to be met, then, we, then uh, you know, the industrial policy instrument hasn't been used to its maximum. And then we may, have, well, may as well have just gone on an open tender, gone for the cheapest price across the board, because I'm sure the suppliers always, if they're having to jump through these extra hoops, and there's no doubt that suppliers are doing uh, a lot. I mean, whether they're doing enough is, is, is another question. We've already seen factories open, particularly uh, we've seen two factories in recent times, a traction motor factory, uh, in Gauteng and uh, Wheels Factory open. These are directly linked to these Transnet con contracts. But we haven't, s uh, you know, we just can't verify at the moment whether enough and, uh, is being met. Transnet is fairly convinced it is, it is in hand. But if it's not, 
then we've let this industrial policy lever go, uh, and it was an opportunity missed. And possibly we could have played less per unit, um, and just uh, you know bought the bought the, the, the rolling stock, um, and got the the freight logistics mo moving faster at a lower cost, than trying to get the suppliers to do all these things, which they po probably pl price in to their contract, and then not deliver. Thank you, Terence. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.